Steve Schmidt is here with us in New York. Steve, the moment you feared the direct answer to a direct question about the result of this election on November 8th has happened. It sure has, and I think it's a disqualifying moment. It's a moment of clear and present danger to our constitutional order, uh, to the republic. Uh, it's unprecedented in the history of the country. Uh, constitutional officers like Paul Ryan, uh, I think, are now at an hour where they're called to step forward, uh, to exhibit political courage, uh, to put the country first, and to communicate very clearly that we have legitimate elections in this country, and that is how we choose our leaders. Uh, I agree with Chris uh, that Donald Trump was more coherent, at least in the first part of the debate, than he has been in the previous debates. First but, half hour, yeah. But clearly he was provoked throughout. He became angrier. He lost control. And I think as you look at the end of the debate when he says, you nasty woman, uh, his anger is such, and what we know from the first debate, what comes next from the rounds of tweeting and the statements that will, that will follow on this? And does it keep him moving in a trajectory that will continue the Republican slide in the polls? Certainly on the issue of immigration, he did himself no good in states like Arizona, in Nevada, uh, in Georgia, in Texas, which is, which is narrowing up. Uh, he was incoherent again on national security issues. Uh, he was like an old man in the park feeding squirrels, arguing with himself on the question of, on the question of Mosul. Um, he was <laughs> incoherent on the uh, question of Aleppo. And um, just somebody who has not prepared himself over the course of the campaign on these vital national security issues. But, but what this debate is about, it's about one thing. Uh, this, this came down to one thing in 90 minutes, is you have a candidate, one of the nominees of the two political parties who has broken a foundational political compact. Uh, and this is a moment uh, for everybody involved in America's national life uh, that I think is one of urgency. Hello and welcome to the Three Muckrakers podcast for Friday, the 21st of October, 2016. Thankfully, just 17 days until the November 8th U.S. presidential election. This is our Donald's Titanic Waterloo edition. <laughs> As Trump in his own mind thinks he's winning, but the rest of the world knows otherwise. Last night, he threatened the very democracy he's standing to lead by saying he'd keep everyone in suspense about whether or not he'd endorse and support the election result. It's bad enough that 10 women have come forward alleging sexual assault, that he continues to promote Putin as the great leader destroying ISIS, despite coalition forces backed by the USA doing the heavy lifting, and contrary evidence showing the erection of anti-aircraft missiles in Damascus, when ISIS has no airplanes, only the US and coalition forces. Huh? Yeah. And he keeps parodying his own parody on SNL by the brilliant Alec Baldwin, sniffing and saying, wrong. Wrong, wrong, at every moment like a petulant child. Hillary Clinton, on the other hand, looked very presidential last night and uh, forceful. She never stopped when Trump talked over her. We'll discuss that. Closer to home, the Brexit High Court case could become very interesting as the court is looking more likely to rule against the government and demand that MPs vote on Brexit because of the myriad moving parts involved in leaving the European Union and the common market. As we've said all along here, a vote not to leave by Parliament would finally signal the end of this fool's errand and bring much-needed stability to markets and life in the UK. And the Welsh budget was approved with more money going to the NHS and education, but can we believe it will actually come to pass? 